Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head out to America once again. We're going to go out to California on the West Coast and we're revisiting a brewery that I haven't done a dedicated review for in about three years actually. I'm not sure why that transpired, but this particular beer was one that was in the small parties through Seistembol Agate here in Sweden and uh, I just got it and thought, you know, it'd be cool to return to this brewery after such a long time. So for this review then, we are going to go to San Diego and we're having a taste of another beer from Modern Times Beer. This one is called the Spaceways, it's one of their seasonal beers and it's a New England IPA coming in at 6.7% ABV. The main reason that this one caught my eye was that it has Nelson and Motuka in it. Nelson, Sovian and Motuka of course both hops from New Zealand and if you've watched the channel before you will know that I'm a huge fan of the New Zealand hops. So very curious to see how this one turns out. It seems to be pretty highly rated but we know that Modern Times Beer do some very good um, New England IPAs. So curious to see how this one turns out and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Modern Times Beer before. Hopefully I can add some more in the near future and I won't be leaving three years until the next dedicated review I can guarantee you that. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Modern Times Beer. So Modern Times Beer, as I've told you before, are based in the Point Loma district of San Diego in California. And this brewery was founded back in 2013 by Jacob McKean, who was a beer geek home brewer and former stone brewing employee who went and decided to go for it and start his own company. So they brewed their first batch of beer on the 18th of May 2013 and they had their first beers on tap in their tasting room on the 9th of August before the grand opening a bit later on the 1st of September of 2013. So the brewery originally started to operate on a 30 BBL system and today their beers are quite widely distributed across the American Southwest. I think they're in places like Arizona and Texas and, uh, and things like that as well, New Mexico. Basically they're up the west coast and can of across uh, a little bit out to the centre of the US actually and of course they're over here in Europe now you can find these beers back home in Scotland and also here in Sweden and I believe that they're fairly easy to find over in Denmark and up in Norway and things like that as well but the brewery apparently is named after the utopian community that was founded in 1850 and most of their beers or a number of their beers rather are named after kind of utopian ideas or mythological utopias as a result of this but apparently the modern times colony people lived with bartering without any restrictions of marriage and they experimented with uh, kind of less uh, a less exploitable and more kind of pleasurable world if you like but today the modern times colony is in Brentwood on Long Island in New York State and uh, Jacob has always been keen on these little pockets of history and so he decided that he wanted to name the brewery after one. These days though modern times beer have two tap rooms in San Diego there's a brewery and restaurant in Los Angeles one in Encinitas if I'm pronouncing that correctly and they've also got another brewery restaurant in Portland in Oregon as well as a restaurant in Santa Barbara as well. They've also been roasting their own coffee for a number of years as well and producing a lot of coffee stouts too so if you are a coffee buff or a coffee nerd or however you want to call it then uh, Modern Times beer are one that you definitely want to check out. I'd love to have a go at some of their coffee stouts because Dugas Brewery here in Sweden have been doing some very very nice ones and I've learned a good little bit about coffee beans and things um, since getting into their beers so that would be cool to try some of the Modern Times coffee stouts. Even though I don't drink coffee myself I like them. I like coffee beans and beer but I've just never been a great fan of actually drinking coffee. Um, these days this brewery are going through a, a kind of transi transition if you like to become um, uh, employee owned as well which is kind of interesting. I know that New Belgium Brewery did that as well and the West Brewery in Glasgow at home in Scotland are also doing something similar. So it seems to be quite um, quite common. I think it's a little bit more common in America actually that people will start companies and when they decide to retire um, they'll uh, gradually let the employees buy it and keep the company going. So pretty cool I have to say. But um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Modern Times Beer for the moment. It's one of the, these guys are one of the kind of newer Californian breweries on the block from what I understand 
and one of the ones, one of the newer ones that we are getting over here in Europe at the moment as well. But definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. As of November 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, incidentally, according to Untapped, they've produced just under 1,150 different beers, which is pretty impressive for a brewery that's only been around about six years, actually. So, yeah, kudos to uh, Modern Times Beer for that one. But, um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. You can check out the Ray Beer and Untapped pages as well to see all the different beers that they do. But I think if they've got 1,150 beers, you're going to be there for a little while, to be quite honest. So, um, yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up there. You can see it is that typical um, modern times almost minimalist thing actually. It's, I think that maybe they've taken that idea from some of the New England breweries. A lot of the European breweries are copying this of course as well. Um, it says on the back here, um, Spaceways, uh, a New England IPA, or hazy IPA rather, uh, hot with Nelson, Motuka and Simcoe. So Nelson gives you those lovely kind of white green grapey notes. Motuka is quite a big limey hop from New Zealand as well. And then Simcoe is an American hop that gives you that lovely, almost kind of more milky um, passion fruit. You know, of course, you've got, if you want very strong passion fruit, it's Galaxy you'd go for. The malt base in this one is two row, white wheat, flaked oats and dextra pills. So should be interesting. But it says this delectable hazy IPA is packed to the brim with mountains of Nelson, Motuka and Simcoe hops and fermented with a London three yeast yielding a brilliant profile complete with mango, nectarines and bright lime zest character. Prepare your flavour receptacles for an astonishing thrill ride through a garden of tropical delights. So um, yeah, should be interesting this one. There of course you can see down here this is quite a popular symbol for some of the modern times beer as well, that little MT thing. But a lovely presented can this. This one is 473 millilitres in real people measurements or in the imperial system. We call that the imperial system. The metric system is better. But in American people measurements, this one is one US pint. 473 millilitres. But let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting. A hazy New England IPA, however you want to call it, at 6.7% from modern times beer over in California. San Diego in America. So, yeah. Still a little bit left in the can. We'll pour the rest in after a wee bit, but this will be enough to take a little look at the beer. So we can get rid of the brewery notes now and get on and actually taste this beer. So, um, yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect, this one's poured a lovely, kind of hazy, bright yellow colour, actually. It's a sort of, this one is one of the kind of richer yellowy notes. It's got a little bit of an orangey character too, but I would say it is more of a yellowy colour, this one, to be honest with you. You could see there was a solid two-third finger of a frothy white head in this one, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and a few little ones just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it looks pretty nice, and this one is... Um, is exactly what you would kind of expect from a New England IPA, to be honest. There's nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. And I'll tell you something, when you open up the can of this one, the aroma is absolutely beautiful. So let's take a closer look at that now and see how we get on. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. It smells as if it's pretty fresh as well. One of the things I've often complained about when it comes to uh, these American beers that reach us here in Sweden, quite often I don't think the importers are having them handled properly. Um, because they come across and they're not often fresh but um, yeah this one smells as if it is pretty fresh actually so straight away in the nose with this beer you're going to get that lovely white bready quality you can definitely smell some of that slightly thicker wheaty white bread in there there's a little touch of biscuit to it you can smell a little bit of the kind of oaty creaminess out of this one but definitely the biscuity notes are fairly prominent in this, but nice bready base, a little bit of oaty creaminess and a bit of a biscuity sweetness in there as well. Um, everything you'd expect actually from the malt base, and I think some of the creaminess in this is coming from um, these dextrose notes. I've got a feeling that this one might turn out to be a little bit like some of the Cloudwater IPAs from... Uh, from England actually. If they're using dextrose in a London ale yeast, that's kind of quite often put Cloudwater we're using in uh, in my experience. But um, yeah, the malt base on this one comes across as quite nice. One of the other things I would say is that the more you smell of this beer, the more pungent the sort of wheaty profile comes out on this one. As I've told you before, wheat can have a little bit of a uh, it can have quite a smooth profile or it can be quite pungent and I think this one is it gets a little bit more pungent the more you smell of the beer. But in terms of the uh, the the hoppy side of it, you've got a nice kind of big floral aromaticity to this one. It's quite a spicy floral note, and I think that's Nelson Sovine that's going to give you a lot of that 
Nelson Sovian incidentally is about 13% alpha acid. I mean, it gives you this lovely light green grapey, white grapey, fruity flavour, but it's got a good kick to it when it comes to um, floral aromaticity and things like that as well. Don't ever underestimate that hop if you use it earlier in the boil. But um, yeah, the aroma of this beer is nice. Um, so yeah, big floral aromaticity to this one. Quite spicy actually, and that helps bring out some of these kind of big citrusy notes that the beer has. There's a little bit of a lighter grassiness there, um, and no real earthiness to this one. So the green side of the hops is definitely leaning towards that big spicy floral aromatic note. Good bit of a green grapey character out of this one, and some nice kind of lime pungency as well. So the Motuika and the um, the Motuika and the Nelson Sovian are definitely showing their head in this one. And behind that, you can get a little bit of that passion fruity note that you would expect from Simcoe. And it's quite a nice creamy passion fruity note that comes out of this beer. Um, but yeah, it's the Simcoe, as I've mentioned to you, it's, it seems to have been replaced a lot recently by, um, by Galaxy. Because Galaxy is a bit more pungent and it's got a few complexities like pineapple and stuff in it. So Simcoe's been a little bit forgotten about. But it was, of course, one of the big three hops originally, along with Amarillo and Citra. But the aroma of this beer really is very nice and quite um, quite inviting. A nice big floral IPA, New England IPA rather, with a good little bit of a wheaty pungency and some lovely just light juicy tropical fruity notes. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one. It's kind of everything that you would expect from um, from the beer to be honest. There are a few kind of tropical fruit complexities in there, maybe a little bit of an apricot mango mangoey note, but um, yeah, mainly it's kind of what you would expect if you know these hops. So take a bit of time to enjoy that, but we're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. This one is the Spaceways, a 6.7% New England IPA, hazy IPA, however you want to term it, from Modern Times Beer in Point Loma, San Diego, California, over in America. Let's get stuck into this one. Slangium, Skull. Yeah, that's a really nice, very smooth New England IPA actually. Um, it really does, it does remind me a little bit of some of these cloud water ones. Um, and you know, that is that is kind of what I was expecting. This is one of the smoother New England IPAs I've come across in recent times actually. But I'll say straight away, this one gets a thumbs up. I'm a huge fan of the New Zealand hops, so just bear that in mind. You know, this, this one is hitting a lot of spots for me. Beer is always subjective, different people will think different things, but this beer does tick a lot of boxes for me. But yeah, that is really pretty damn good actually. It's the, af the aftertaste of this beer is really something that's, that just, as I say, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. So yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then. There we are, that's a nice pour. You can see it's got just that little bit hazier as well. You always have to watch that, especially with these American beers that we get. Sometimes, obviously, within the can, you'll get a little bit of sedimentation because we get these beers when they're about two months old or something like that. But, um, yeah, so let's break the flavour of this one down. Um, in the middle of your palate, then, you're going to get that lovely white bready, wheaty quality. That just blankets the middle of the tongue. The further you go into the aftertaste, you're going to notice the... Um, a little bit of the creaminess, the, the creaminess and the, the sort of dextrosey qualities of this one, they really smoothen that out. This malt base comes across as, as quite light but really quite smooth at the same time and that's the dextrose sugars that are doing that. Yeah, this one really does remind me of the cloud water beers from uh, from Manchester in England. It's, it's got a it's got a really kind of similar vibe to it. And it's it's kinda of cool in a in a way because you know, these beers, um, th this is a style really that originated in the kind of New England part of America rather than the West Coast. So it is cool to see the West Coast breweries doing well at this as well. I'd love to see the New England breweries having a go at some of the West Coast IPAs. I have been missing a good big bitter caramelly IPA, I have to admit. I'd love to get some more West Coast IPA reviews for you on the channel again. So I think um, probably my next trip after my New England trip that's coming up for my friend's wedding, I think the next trip to the US has to be California probably. So we we'll need to see how that goes. But pardon me, this is a lovely big smooth um, New England IPA. Mm. So yeah, malt base as I say, lovely smooth 
white bready wheat, you know, there, the, the wheat isn't quite as pungent as you're expecting from the aroma, but you've got the nice oaty creaminess in there, a little bit of the dextrose quality, a little bit of the kind of um, biscuity um, caramelly note in the middle of the palate too. There's nothing really surprising about the malt base in this one. It's just really quite nicely done. The two row malts, incidentally, they're some of my favourite American malts actually and I wish more European breweries would use them but I think you know when you've got a big malt producing country like Germany on your doorstep you're going to get the the German malts which are you know just as good just different if you like and um, when you've got those on your doorstep it's, it's a bit of a, a stretch probably to bring in these American Turo malts so it's interesting to come across those in a New England IPA as well probably some of the ones that I've had and um, have had those malts in them like Treehouse and um, because out of the the big four New England IPA breweries that I've had. Um, this one, it does remind me, these beers are kind of closest, I think, to, to Treehouse, to be honest. They've got the same drinkability as Treehouse, but they've got a little bit more of the kind of malt base of the European ones that I've tried, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, that the, the smoothness in the malt base of this beer really is um, what makes it, as I say, very similar to Cloudwater in England. Um, but yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there's a teeny little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, that smooths out a little bit. Lovely big floral aromaticity at the front corners of the palate, then around the very front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and grassy, which is, is really, really nice. Yeah, that is a lovely, I just love how this um, this whole thing goes together actually, it's, it's lovely. Um, the fruity side of this beer is, is just ticks a lot of boxes for me. So as I always say, you get the, the fruity esters coming out of the beer in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of your tongue and the way the grassiness in this beer comes out as well that really just boosts everything so if you go towards the back of that oily bubble you'll get a little bit of the passion fruity notes there which are coming from the Simcoe obviously and passion fruit is quite distinctive because it has a little bit of that dark flavour and it's almost sour but not tart sour it's just got a little bit of darkness to it but as you move further forward you start to get there's a little bit of a mangoey apricotty can, uh, maybe even papaya, there's a little bit of a tropical fruit complexity to this beer but very quickly it starts to lean towards the kind of green white grapey notes that I was talking about from Nelson Sovine and those are very distinctive you really just have to try those for yourself but as you get towards the front part, just the very front tip of the tongue around that kind of front curve you're getting a little bit of a nice um, kind of limey note to the beer as well which um, which really suits it. it gives the beer a little bit of dryness the further you go into the aftertaste which is nice and that just rounds the beer off very very well the limey flavors kind of match up with the big floral spicy floral aromaticity and you've also got the um the green grape notes the juiciness from the green grapes and some of the tropical fruit complexities that's what really lingers into the aftertaste along with a little bit of the biscuity note in that lovely smoothness which I suspect is probably both the London yeast and also the uh, the two row malts that are in here um, it, that you've just got a lovely blend between the, the kind of oaty creaminess and the sort of biscuity notes from the, the two row in this one. This, this is a, lot, a beer that just has a lot of balance to it, it's one that's very nice and very easy to drink. It'd be cool to try this one on tap right enough um, but it's, it's interesting for me as well to try another New England IPA that has the New Zealand hops in it. I'd love to get back to New Zealand and uh, and see what they're brewing down there within this style category. We don't get too many New Zealand beers up here in, uh, in Sweden at the moment, but this is a lovely example of the New England IPA style, so it gets a big thumbs up from me, this one. I love the, the, the way that the Nelson Sovin and the Motoika bring out this beer. In a lot of ways, they're using hops that come across um, in a very nice and soft manner, if you like. I've always found the New Zealand hops, they had a nice um, oily, fruity quality to them, but at the same time it was very juicy and smooth, and this beer really kind of embodies that in the whole, um, with the malt base as well. This is just a very, very well-rounded beer in my opinion, so big thumbs up from me. This is a lovely session, or this. No, no two doubts about that. makes me disappointed that I haven't reviewed one from them in quite a long time. But um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, um, definitely I, I think this is a, a mid-bodied beer. Carbonation is really smooth. It leans towards the, um, it really leans towards the nice kind of smooth, um, creamy side of things. This is a very light but still very smooth and creamy New England IPA. In terms of IBUs, 
I think it's about 40. It says on the back of the can it's 50, but I don't think it's, I wouldn't have thought it was 50 IBUs. I would have thought this one was about 40 if I was blind tasting it in that sense. So it's uh, it's interesting in that. It does have a nice little bit of a bitterness from that kind of floral spicy sort of thing. So it's just interesting that it is actually 50. I would have thought it was a bit, I would have thought it was a bit more than 30, which is the standard, um, but not, I wouldn't have quite thought it was 50. Um, but yeah, nice little bit of bitterness to this beer, lovely sweetness to the malt base, and also a, a great smoothness to the beer as well, and just a lovely light, juicy, but still very slightly oily, fruity character to this one. So this is just a lovely take on the uh, the New England Hazy IPAs. If you're a fan of the New Zealand hops like I am, this is one that is definitely going to go down a treat. And um, I need to try another couple of the IPAs, I think, from modern times and just see how they are. But it's Because I remember they were good, but I don't remember them being quite as good as this. So it'll be interesting to see how the recipes and stuff have developed over the last couple of years. But a lovely take on this style and one that you definitely need to try if you get the chance. So let's just leave it at that for this one. This one is the Spaceways, a New England IPA, hazy IPA coming in at 6.7% from Modern Times Beer in Point Loma, San Diego, America. A lovely take on this style and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. And I won't be leaving it three years before I do another review from Modern Times. I can tell you that straight away after this one. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from modern times as well. We will definitely return to these guys at some point soon. And do give me your favourite beer recommendations from these guys. That would be great to see. But yeah, I will catch you guys very soon. Check out my social media and make sure you check out some of these modern times beers. We've got a few other American things to review for you over the next few videos. So I hope you enjoy these before we crack on with the Christmas beers. Till the next time, stand just now and I'll catch you guys later. Spaceways, a 6.7% New England IPA from... Um, Modern Times Beer in San Diego, California, America. Slanja, Skull, cheers.